Hello. Hello. Welcome to day 25 or 55. 25. 55. Wow. We're sailing right along. We only got, I was thinking we only got 300 and 365. <laughs> Anyways, on day 55, 315 left. we're going to read from Numbers 9 to 11 and we're going to read <clears throat> chapter 5, 1 to 20. I'm Linda. This is Eric. I'm Eric. Yes. And um, we were talking, Eric and I, about how fortunate we are that we were, our family lineage is probably heathens or something, Gentiles anyway. In the New Testament, not as much as required of Gentiles except for believing and having faith in Jesus Christ and not strangling animals and eating blood and so forth. Yeah, but you're getting way ahead of it. But the point is, um, we were reading about all the blood sacrifices. Every time the Israelites did something wrong, all these animals had to be slaughtered and sacrificed. And it made us think of a song, an old Sunday school song that we used to sing. That Eric has a tenor voice, and I have like a really low voice, so he can't play for my voice. So he's going to sing along and play in his voice, and I'll give it my best effort. I hope I don't ruin it. Anyway, go ahead. Well, it's uh. <clears throat> he paid a debt. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owe a debt. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song. Amazing. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song. Amazing grace, Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if it was very good or not. Thank you, Jesus. But we to Over the year, we'll have to do a few more times. Yeah. I gotta go over here for a sec. He's leaving me. Uh -huh. I got my reading glasses. Uh -huh. okay. that, which I didn't organize myself. Nine or eleven. The Passover. And yeah. I was kind of open that we'd be reading about the Passover closer to Passover, but I guess we're reading about it tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for making a way, for passing over us and giving us your grace through Jesus Christ yes. the Lord. Bless us as we read your word. Help us to read clearly and to read it according to as it's written. And help us have understanding. Bless all those who join in and follow along. So pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to run out of time now. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 6. We already got me. <sighs> but some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, we have become unclean because of a dead body, but why should we be kept from presenting uh, presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? <coughs> Moses answered them, wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites, when any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body or are away on a journey, they may still celebrate the Lord's Passover. They are to celebrate it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread 
and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if a man who is ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, that person must be cut off from his people because he did not present the Lord's offering at the appointed time. That man will bear the consequences of his sin. An alien being <coughs> among you who wants to celebrate the Lord's Passover must do so in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for the alien as the native born, the cloud above the tabernacle. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of testimony was set up, the cloud covered it from evening till morning. The cloud over the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Uh, we read this already, so I wanted to check and make sure we had this back legs. <laughs> Whenever the cloud um, lifted from the tent, an Israelite, Israel's Israelites set out. Whenever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at the Lord's command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's orders and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp. And then at, uh, and at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed over from evening till morning. And when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whether the cloud lifted, they set up. Whenever the cloud lifted, they set up. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days, or a month, or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set up. But when it lifted, they would set up. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set up. They obeyed the Lord's orders in an accordance with his commandment through Moses. Chapter 10. How many chapters do we read? Three. The silver trumpets. <clears throat> the Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets of hammered silver and use them for calling the community together and for having the camps set out. When both are sounded, the whole community is to assemble before you at the entrance to the temple, the tent of meeting. If only one is sounded, the leaders, the heads of the clans of Israel, are to assemble before you. When a trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes camping in the east are to set out. At the sounding of a second blast, the camp in the south are to set out. The blast will be the signal for setting out. Um, together the assembly blow the trumpets, but not with the same signal. The sons of Aaron, the priests, are to blow the trumpets. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into battle in your own land against an enemy who is oppressing you, Sound the blast on the trumpet. Then you will be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. You Interesting. Know, I think I better get a trumpet. A lot of, when you watch movies, historical wars, a lot of different cultures do the same <coughs> thing. They're the trumpet players go before the battle. Eric and I used to watch these movies and say, why are they blowing a trumpet now? The enemy knows they're coming. Now we know the answer. <laughs> also at that time of rejoicing, your appointed feast, and new moon festivals, you are to sound the trumpets over your burnt offering and fellowship offering, and they will be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. Okay, now we read about the Israelites leaving Sinai. On the twentieth day of the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the testimony. Then the Israelites set out from the desert of Sinai and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran. They set out this first time at the Lord's command through Moses. The divisions of the camp of Judah were first under their standard, and Nashon, son of Amadad, was in command, and Nathaniel, son of Zorah, was over the division of the tribe of Ishkar, and Eliab, son of Helon, was over the divisions of the tribe of Zebulun. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonites and the Maronites who carried it set out. I'm going to go check my dogs who are barking outside, and you're going to read verse 18 of chapter 10. I will. 
Verse 18. The division of the camp of Reuben went next under their standard. Eleazar, son of Shedder, was in command. Shalamiel, son of Zerushadiah, they was over the division of the tribe of Simeon. And Eleazar, son of Duel, was over the division of the tribe of Gad. Then the Kohathites set out carrying the holy things. The tabernacle was to be set up before they arrived. <clears throat> the division of the camp of Ephraim went next under their standard. Elishama, son of Amahud, was in command. And Gamaliel, son of Paduzar, was over the division of the tribe of Manasseh. And Abedan, son of Gideoni, was over the division of the tribe of Benjamin. Finally, at the rear guard for all the units, the division of the camp of Dan set out under the standard of Adhelizer, son of Amidadali, was the in command. Pekiel, son of Akran, was over the division of the tribe of Asher. And Ahira, son of Enan, was over the division of the tribe of Nephtali. This was the order of march of the Israelite divisions as they set out. Verse 20. Now Moses said to Hophobab, son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for the place about which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well. For the Lord has promised good things to Israel. He answered, No, I will not go. I am going back to my own land and my own people. But Moses said, Please do not leave us. You know where we should camp in the desert, and you can be our eyes. If you come with us, we will share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us. So they set out from the mountain of the Lord and traveled for three days. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord went before them during those three days to find them a place to rest. The cloud of the Lord was over them by day when they set out from the camp. Whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Rise up, O Lord, may your enemies be scattered. May your foes flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. That's another song. Rise up, O Lord, song, Lamb of God. Let your enemies be scattered. And, and, and even though we're supposed to be out of time, it hasn't stopped yet. So we're going to read a little well, bit of chapter 11, just in enough. case. It's given us extra time finally, like it's supposed to. <laughs> Fire from the Lord. Fire from the Lord. Now the Lord complained about their hardship. Now the people complained about their hardship in the, in, in the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. And the people cried out to Moses. He prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So that place was called Tabera, because fire from the Lord had burnt among them. So now you're going to watch and see if it turns off while I read. Okay, quail from the Lord. Then the rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started waiting, wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt. At no cost, also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. The manna was like coriander seed and looked like resins. The people went ar around gathering it, <coughs> then, then ground it into hand mill or crushed it in a mort mortar. They cooked it in a pot or made it into cakes, and it tasted like something made with olive oil. When the dew settled on the camp at night, the manna also came down. Moses heard the people um, of every family wailing, each at the entrance of his tent. The Lord became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, Why have you brought these people on your servant? What have I done to displease you, that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I concern these people? Did I give them birth? Why? Do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised? 
an ode to their forefathers. Where can I get meat for all these people? <laughs>